Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to our video. Today, we're going to discuss another topic in the Mathematics in the Modern World series. Today, we're going to discuss what is mathematics, mathematics in the conceptual, conceptual perspective perspective previously in this channel we have discussed the what is mathematics in the historical perspective and the philosophical perspective now we'll dive in another type of perspective now the conceptual perspective the following are the four common concepts dealt by mathematics itong apat na ito daw and na alam ko nakikita nyo lima pero Itong pang lima, ito yung pinaka-building blocks ng apat na nauna. So basically, we'll talk about these four common concepts that is being dealt in the world of mathematics. Yan yung mga nakikita natin sa math, usually. So let's start with the quantity. Okay? Let's scroll down a little bit. Okay. Number one, mathematics of quantity. The mathematics of quantity refers to the various operations, take note of the word operations, within different number sets. Our elementary school mathematics days are mostly dedicated to this. Diba? Yun yung mga elementary math. Yun yung mathematics of quantity. Under this area, we talk about arithmetic. Arithmetic. In which we study various operations on any number set. Yan ang pinag-aaralan natin, di ba? Arithmetic, yung mga 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, correct? Di ba? Yung mga 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. That's what we are talking about in arithmetic, okay? Also, numeration contains various records of numerals of every ancient civilization that existed. And what are the examples of this? And alam natin, di ba yung ginagamit natin in the modern days, is the Hindu-Arabic system. Ito yun, Hindu-Arabic. Next, the most common, yung pangalawa pa, is the Roman numerals. Okay, di ba yung mga ganyang symbols? And these are the Greeks. This is are the, the Greeks. The Greeks. And this is the Egyptians. Egyptians. And this is the gravity, as they say. Gravity. Gravity, and is the Babylonians, the Babylonians, Babylonians, and this is the Chinese, Chinese, and this is the Mayans, the Mayans. Diba? Yan yung mga, mga different representations nila ng numbers. Kung makikita nyo nga yung Romans, Greek, Egyptians, they don't have a representation to the number zero. Diba? Yan yung, ano, yan yung mga common numerals. So, that's the mathematics of quantity for you. It consists of arithmetic and the numeration systems. And let's carry on, guys. Let's continue to dive into mathematics even more. Now, number two, the mathematics of structure. The mathematics of structure the, refers to the interconnection of the properties of various mathematical objects. Yan yung purpose niya. Ibig sabihin, may interconnection siyang binibuild up. May dalawang nagko-comprise niya sa mathematics of structure. The field working with matrices and its computations is called linear algebra. Linear algebra. And I know that you have maybe some of some of you have uh, watched this movie, The Matrix, by Keanu Reeves. Or uh, and uh, this, alam ko nakita niyo na siguro yan or at some point. But that's not what I'm talking about. The matrices that I'm talking about is of this form, yung mga rectangular objects na, na may mga numbers sa loob. And if you can read this, ito yung ay two by two matrix. 2x2 two two matrix. And this operation right here in the monitor is matrix matrix addition. So basically, ang sinasabi lang na matrix addition na to, kung ano yung, yung corresponding places 
ng isang matrix, at alam mo yung first place from the left, uh, upper left, pag-aadin mo lang yun, tapos makukuha mo to. Di ba? It's straightforward, right? It's matrix addition for you all. Now, while the field dealing with algebraic families and the classifications is called abstract algebra, basically what I'm trying to say in this field is that this is the abstraction of the common algebra that you have known no mga bata pa tayo, yung mga, may mga roots of polynomials, mga ganun, yung mga quadratic formula, di ba? Diyan, nalalagyan na abstraction. And what do I mean by this? Kung makikita nyo itong image na to, this is what we call a lattice diagram. Lattice diagram. Of the, one of the algebraic families na tinutukoy is D4. Ayan yung dihedral group. Diba? Dihedral group. Yan yung parang structure niya. Kung makikita mo, diba? We, this is the mathematics of structure. This basically tells us a structure of a group. Kung baga, ito ay representation. And that's what we call a lattice diagram. I will not be talking about the, ano, the profoundness of these fields because ang purpose ko lang naman is to give you a slight background. But this is what I'm talking about. This is linear algebra. Deals with matrices. And this is abstract algebra. Ano bang main goal? Bakit ko ito sinasabi? Ang main goal is that para hindi nyo lang alam kapag sinabing algebra, yung mga x plus 4, x plus 4 equals 7, mga ganun, hindi lang ganun yung algebra. This is the different types of algebra that exist in this world right, right now. Ngayon. And let's move on, shall we? Ngayon, this is what we call the mathematics of space. Space na, di ba? The mathematics of space pertains to the introduction and non-introduction of measurement and coordinates with concrete physical objects in their corresponding virtual representation. Ibig sabihin, we are um, giving a representation, di ba? A virtual representation. Ngayon, may dalawang areas ulit yan. And you guessed it because it concerns space. Diba? Kailangan marunong ka magbigay ng space. Ngayon, may dalawang, ano yan, may dalawang areas. Ayun. Una is yung geometry. Geometry works on the measurements, measurements, symmetries, and derived physical qualities of concrete and virtual objects. So basically, what I'm trying to, to say is that geometry talks about shapes, talks about physical objects, di ba? And examples of shapes that we have known since we are a kid is the triangle, the squares, the pentagon, the hexagon, etc. Di ba? Hindi lang naman yun nag nagsasaklaw sa two-dimensional figures, di ba? Meron pa kang three-dimensional figures. For example, a cube, di ba? Paano tayo mag-drawing ng cube? Ganito yung technique. Di ba? Ayan, ayan, ayan. Ayan, this is a cube, right? Ang galing, di ba? That's a cube. That's how you draw a cube. Ulitin natin, ulitin natin. Nag-drawing tayo ng dalawang square. Ganito, ganito, ganyan. Tapos lalagyan mo ng ganito, lalagyan mo ng ganyan, lalagyan mo ng ganito, lalagyan mo ng ganyan. Di ba may cube ka na? Ganun ang cube. Okay. Now, trigonometry deals with the application of triangles because alam nyo naman, di ba, sa salitan trigonometry, the trig part, really pertains about triangles or indirect measurements and fundamentally lays down the idea of wave functions. So basically, what I'm trying to say here is that the, the so-called sine function, di ba naalala niyo yan? Sine function, cosine function, the tangent function, di ba? Naalala niyo yung mga yan? From grade 10, secant function, the cosecant function, Cosecant function and the cotangent function. Diba? Yan yung six trigonometric ratios, the, tri the six trigonometric functions, ika nga. And itong sine and cosine function basically have a sine, uh, sinusoidal or yung wave-like graphs as you can see here. Diba? So that's what trigonometry is all about. Diba? Naalala nyo naman siguro yung tinatawag na so, so, ka, Toa. So, katoa. Siguro naalala niyo yan, di ba? It rings a bell. Pag naririnig niyo yung acronym na yan. Di ba? It's so katoa. 
Now, let's move on. Ay, wala na pala dito. Eh, di next slide tayo. Okay, ayun. Medyo zoom in a little bit. Now, number four. Diba, pang-apat na agad tayo. The mathematics of change. The mathematics of change refers to the existence and treatment of, may space to, the infinitesimals observed in finite dimensions. Diba, para napaka-profound ng terms, na? mga terminologies, infinitesimals. Yeah. Pero what I'm trying to say here is that this field just deals with change. Ganoon lang, puro change. Ngayon, ito na papasok yung mga calculus. We have two types of calculus basically. The differential calculus deals with the derivatives. Derivatives as a general representation of the rates of change. Ngayon, may dalawang parts ng differential calculus. Yung limits, limits, and derivatives. Derivatives. Ngayon, sa limits, yung basic idea lang is that meron kang kinukuhang number. For example, meron tayong ano, function f of x. Yung function natin is, let's say, 1 plus 3x. If we put values of x from the left, from the left, kasi diba, ano ba, gusto mong kunin ang tinatawag na limit as x approaches to ng 1 plus 3x. Diba? Diba yun yung gusto mong kunin? Iburahin ko lang tong derivatives. Lipat natin dito. Lagyan natin ang salitang derivatives dito. Derivatives. Okay. Ngayon dito muna tayo sa limits. Ang gusto mo kasi, diba nag approach ka daw sa number 2. Ang basa lang para dito is the limit of 1 plus 3x as x approaches 2. Ulitin ko ha, kasi hindi ko sinusulat. The limit, diba? The limit of 1 plus 3x as x approaches 2. Ibig sabihin, kukuha ka ng mga values ni x na nag approach kay 2 pero hindi tatama kay 2. Yun ang gusto kong sabihin. Ngayon, kukuha tayo ng mga values from the left. Diba? Ano yung mga nasa, nasa left ba ng, ano, ng 2? Or nasa kaliwa ng 2? Yung 1, 1.4, 1.7, 1.9, 1.95, 1.997, 1.999, 1.999999. Diba? Diba yun yung mga values? And as you can see, it is somewhat approaching to a certain number na hindi naman nagtatouch sa number 7. Kung nakikita nyo. And paano yung kinukuha? You just you're, you're just substituting the value of x dito. Halimbawa, diba, if x is equal to 1, pag sinubstitute mo dito, 1 plus 3 times 1, diba, 1 plus 3 times 1, it is 4. Ito yung 4 na yun. Correct? And as you go along the table, Diba, mapapansin mo, you are approaching to number 7. Diba? Next, kukuha ka naman from the right. From the right. Ibig sabihin sa kanan. Okay, ano ba yung mga nasa kanan ng 2? Diba yung 3, 2.5, 2.2, 2.1, 2.03, 2.009, 2.005, and 2.0001. Diba? And as you can see, if you substitute the values of x to this function, makakakuha ka ulit ng number na nag approach sa number 7 ulit. So what is the conclusion by this observation? The limit of the function 1 plus 3x as x approaches 2, kasi from the left, nag approach sa number 7, and from the right, nag approach sa number 7, anong sagot? It is basically 7. But ganyan ba kumuha ng limit sa Differential calculus, this is just the intuitive idea. May mga rules na yan. Basically, ang tignan mo, ah, yung limit na 1 plus, ano, 1 plus 3x, isubstitute mo yung value ng x is equal to 2 dito. Ano mangyayari? Kunin, alimbawa, kukunin mo, ah, limit as x approaches 2 ng 1 plus 3x, gawin mo 1 plus 3 multiplied by 2. Palitan mo lang yung x ng 2. Di ba mapapansin mo, this is 1 plus 6 is equal to 7, di ba? Yun yung pinaka shortcut. Yun yung idea, you're just substituting the value of x. But if you want to, to see the intuitive idea, kukuha ka ng tinatawag na table of values. Table of values. Ano lang, that's the mathematics of change. Because napapansin mo, may change na nangyayari. This is the limits. Ngayon, dito tayo sa derivatives. 
sa derivatives, if you can, kung naalala nyo sa geometry nyo, di ba, meron tayong tinatag na secant line. Yung secant line, if you touch the, the object or a graph at, at these two points, two points, ano ba, ito, tapos ito, may point na ito, may point na ito. This is a secant line because you intersect, nagtatouch ka sa graph at least two times. Di ba? And kung napapansin nyo, as you go along this path, mapupunta ka sa red line na yan. And this is what we call a tangent line. A tangent line. Di ba? Ganun lang ang basic intuitive idea ng, de ng derivatives. You are just getting the slope of the tangent line. And that, in fact, by definition, is f of x. Um, basically, f prime of x is equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of f, ta f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. Alam ko may mga, may mga confusion pa kung ano yan, but if you're going to take a calculus course, this will make sense. Basically, parang yan yung formula lang ng, de de ng derivative. This is what we call the increment method niya kung may nagtitake ng calculus dyan. Increment method. Diba sabi ko dito, it is a mathematics of change. Kapag gumamit ka kasi ng delta, ng uppercase delta, uppercase delta, pag gumamit ka niyan, ibig sabihin niyan change. Diba ang basa dyan is the change of x. Change of x. Kasi change of x. Diba? Ano ang basa niya. Okay? What are examples of derivatives? Diba alam ba, kukunin mo yung derivative, derivative ng function na x squared. Paano lang ba yan? Yan yung na power rule. Ibababa mo yung 2, kapos maglalagay ka ng variable na x, tapos 2 minus 1. Yung exponent, babawasan mo lang ng 1. So magiging 2x. Ano, yun yung derivative niya. This is what we call the power rule. Binibigyan ko lang kayo ng mga overview na kung ano yung mga types of calculus na yan. Basically, di ba, ang dami ko nang sinabi, pero we are just from the differential calculus. And there is another calculus type, and it is called the integral calculus. Integral calculus works with the finding length, finding length, width, and volume of all forms of geometric objects. So basically, what, what we're trying to say here is that hinahanap mo yung si area, areas of certain objects. And what are examples of this? And halimbawa, mayroon tayong tinatag the curve. This is an area, area under a curve. Where's the curve? Ito, this is the curve. Diba? And we, wa we want to find the area. Yan ang tinatag na integral calculus. And kung nakikita nyo, sa, kung nakapag-advance study na kayo or nakakita na kayo sa, ano, during your senior high school days, uh, basic calculus, ang integral sign, ganito. Integral, ganyan, di ba? Integral. This is an integral sign. Integral sign. And ang sabi dun sa definition, hindi lang naman yan limited sa curves. You, you can also find the area of certain objects, ng mga ganitong objects, so, nakikita nyo. Ito, ito yung air under the curve. Ito mga volumes of solid na yan. Volumes of solid. Solids. ba Mga solids yan, no? ba Yan yung nakikita nyo. So, from curves, naging solid siya. And integral calculus can calculate the area or the blue part. Tama? ba It's fascinating, right? Mathematics is very much fascinating. And di ba sabi ko dun sa introduction, di ba napapansin nyo, apat na sila eh. Apat na, di ba? And what, yung sabi ko sa introduction, there is a fifth one. The fifth one is the foundation of everything that we have discussed. Ito yung foundations. And let's go to that foundations, shall we? Ayan. This is the mathematics of foundation. The mathematics of foundation serves as the theoretical base. Theoretical base of the entirety of mathematics. Kumbaga, without this, mathematics will just be a philosophy. Parang wala lang. There is no um, reason for it. So, di ba? The first one, nun sa mathematics of foundation, that we're going to discuss in this course, di ba? Part to ng syllabus. And this is set theory. Set theory basically works with operations, relations, and properties of sets 
relations and functions. Diba? Halimbawa, you are asked to enumerate the members of the popular K-pop group Blackpink sa likod. And, di ba makakapagbigay ka? You can, you are able to name the names of what we what I'm asked. Di ba? Halimbawa, may set A ka. Ang laman yan is si, let's say, Lisa. Lisa. Si Jisoo. Si Jisoo. Sunod si Jenny. Si Jenny. And si Rose. Di ba? This is the set containing the members of the popular K-pop group Blackpink. And pansin niyo, kung, ma kung maalala niyo, um, yung mga sets kasi sinusulat yung mga elements nila into lowercase letters. Kailangan maliliit. Pero bakit ito mga capital letters? Because there are proper nouns. Kapag malinaw na names ang tinutukoy niya, you can actually write it as capital letters because they're proper nouns. Proper nouns are nouns that name, di ba? Yung may pinapangalanan. Okay? And another type of um, what we're, parang intuition ng set theory is what we call the Venn diagrams. The Venn diagrams. And Venn diagrams can actually serve as representations of sets. For example, meron tayong sets na nagko-contain ng resurrected from the dead, yung blue, converts followers, diba? ito yung pink, and the red one, locals fear and revere him. Revere or pinipraise, di ba? Ngayon, yung mga nagre-resurrect sa dead, di ba, ang mga zombies, they resurrect from the dead. Frankenstein even resurrected from the dead. Converts followers. Di ba yung zombie, di ba kapag if you are bitten by a zombie, pag kinagat ka na, you'll become a zombie as well. Okay? Now, Dracula, if you are, you've been bitten by Dracula, you might be you might die or you might become a vampire as well. Okay? Now, another one is that locals fear and revere him. For example, Dracula, um, yung pag, di ba si Dracula, pag nag, ano, nagising siya from his tomb, di ba? Locals fear him, but at the same time, hinahangaan din siya because he's Dracula. <laughs> An example, um, Frankenstein, di ba? Si Frankenstein, Diba yung, diba, he's from the dead and rose again, diba, parang ganun. And locals fear and revere him, diba? And why is zombie not here? Because zombies are not revered. <laughs> hindi sila hinahangaan, diba? They are feared lang. Kaya hindi siya sinama dito sa area na to. And notice that, diba, may tatlong, yung tatlong karakteristik na nabanggit ko has an intersection and it is Jesus Christ, diba? Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead, di ba? Converts followers, di ba? If nagbigay siya ng, ano, ng gospel, and locals fear and revere him. Bakit fear? Tanong. Di ba? May mga miracles siya. Di ba? Sa, di ba kung nandun ka sa panahon na yun, di ba? Medyo naka, nakakatakot because, di ba? But syempre sa point of view natin, it is amazing. It's a miracle. Di ba? Tinit tinitinan lang natin yung point of view nandun nung time na yun. And revere kasi syempre, is Jesus Christ. We praise Him. Okay? Diba? That's an example of the representations of Venn diagrams. Diba? Diba? Napakagandang example nito. And if we get, go to set theory soon, um, I want you to remember this example. And this will be posted here in our, in our series. Ngayon, pangalawa sa mathematics of foundation is what we call mathematical logic which will be discussed again in this course. Mathematical logic deals on operations, relations, and properties of propositions and quantification. Yung mga propositions and quantification, it is, these are terms that will be discussed and um, i-discuss yan um, soon. But gusto ko lang kayo bigyan ng overview. For example, you have a statement P. Oh, you wake up. Wake up at, let's say, 7 a.m. Diba? You wake up at 7 a.m. Q. You wake up, wake up at, let's say, 5 a.m. Earlier. Diba? Napaka morning person. Diba? Halimbawa, ang statement kasi na ito is an or statement. Diba? Halimbawa, isa man dyan, yung zero kasi, pertains to the 
the word false, ibig sabihin, hindi nangyari, hindi totoo, and the one here pertains to true. Totoo. Di ba? Ngayon, kapag daw yung P, hindi, hindi, hindi siya nangyari, false, false, zero, yung P and Q are zero, ibig sabihin yung or statement, kasi gusto mo lang kasi doon, kahit isa lang doon mangyari, ituturing mo na siyang totoo. Kaso wala nga doon nangyari, edi ang sagot sa or statement mo is false. Kasi nga hindi nga nangyari kahit isa doon eh. Eh, dito sa pangalawa. Dito sa pangalawa. For example, hindi ka nagising ng 7 a.m. You didn't wake up for 7 a.m. Kasi nga siri na nakalagay dito. Pero 1 nakalagay sa queue. So, you wake up at 5 a.m. E di kapag kinuha mo yung or statement, P or Q, totoo ka. Totoo ka na kasi may, may ginawa kang isa eh. Eh, ito pangatlo. Halimbawa, hindi ka naman nagising ng 5 a.m. Pero nagising ka ng 7 a.m. Pag kinuha mo yung or statement niyan, totoo yung nagising ka ng 7 a.m. So, may isang totoo. Kaso itong pangalawang, ano, pangalawang, itong panghuli, itong pang-apat, medyo mahirap paniwalaan. Kasi nagising ka na ng 7 a.m. at nagising ka na ng 5 a.m. at magigising ka na ulit ng 7 a.m. For example, ito yung instance na nagising ka ng 5 a.m., may ginawa ka na, tapos nakaidlip ka ulit, tapos nagising ka ng 7 a.m. This is that instance. For example, totoong ginawa mo yun, pareho, e di totoo yung or statement kasi nagising ka So the only instance na magiging false lang or statement is that kapag hindi naging totoo yung dalawang bagay na pinag-uusapan mo. And I want you to take note of that guys kasi this will be discussed further in the next few lessons in the future. Ngayon, this is mathematics of foundation for you all. Now finally, if you want to recall the conceptual perspective, the following are the four main concepts. Ito, nabanggit natin to, di ba? Ito, yung quantity is yung, di ba, yung, tawag dito, yung arithmetic, arithmetic and numeration, numeration. Itong structure is yung linear, and abstract algebra, abstract algebra, yung space, ano yung space? Yung geometry, and trigonometry, trigonometry, yung change is yung differential, differential and integral calculus and lastly yung yung kaka-discuss na natin is yung set theory and mathematical logic mathematical logic so all of that being said this is mathematics this is the concept, the conceptual part of mathematics. This is this is different from the other perspectives, na historical and philosophical, because this right here we actually talked about the common mathematics na nakikita natin. Now, mathematics concepts are interlocking and might be overlapping blocks of knowledge. Kasi makikita mo, alam mo, arithmetic, makikita mo sa mga numbers dito sa mga pinag-uusapan dito, de ba? And the areas of quantity, structure, space, and change all stand on the firm mathematical foundations. Itong dulo. And that is why here in the mathematics in the modern world, we will talk about these foundations, the set theory and the mathematical logic. That is why this is part of this course. And I hope you learned something today, guys. Um, I hope that you have appreciated math even more through the concepts that we have discussed. Kahit pa paano, siguro nagkaroon kayo ng overview of what are these kinds of topics na pinag-uusapan sa math. Kahit pa paano, meron kayong tidbits na tinatawag. And see you again real soon, guys. And keep safe out there. Kakatapos na ng bagyo. And good night, fellow mathematicians. And have a great day. Goodbye.